Welcome back to Hyperbaric Living Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Masha. Today I have with me Bill Schindler. I had him on a podcast before. Everybody always sends me comments about that podcast episode. If you haven't listened to it, uh, you can watch it. It's available on YouTube and on Spotify. Bill runs a clinic in Georgia, in Buford, Georgia, People Helping People. It's a hyperbaric clinic, and Bill has been in hyperbaric business for how long, Bill? How many years? About 23. Wow. And you've helped how many families? Because that number always changes. It, it becomes yeah, bigger and bigger every time yeah. I talk to we you. We haven't helped enough families yet because if we helped them all, okay, but we've treated over 60,000 families. Wow. Yeah. That's and impressive. It, so that's... Well, it's, it's a... It's a blessing. It's a blessing to make a difference in the world. You never stop to amaze me. I call you Good Samaritan. Uh, and uh, as I said in, in uh, when we spoke last time, it's because you always take that extra step to help families in need, families who need hyperbaric therapy. And today I wanted to talk to you about the affordability and accessibility of hyperbaric therapy. Somebody receives a diagnosis and as we all do, we start asking Dr. Google on internet and somehow we find information that hyperbaric therapy could be helpful. What do people uh, what should people do next? We go to a, a conference uh, uh, once a year or so called A4M, and there's like rows upon rows of vendors there, all kinds of people that say, I can cure arthritis, I can cure cancer, I can cure this. And I'm looking up and down there, if y'all could do what you said you could do, we wouldn't have anybody sick. So how do you know and how do I know what the real deal is? Well, maybe out of those 600 vendors, there's four or five things that are really something that we should explore and at least see if this could help me and my family, whatever condition and disease that we have. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So, so let's say I'm that patient who uh -huh. learned that uh, I have an autoimmune disease and I looked up that hyperbaric therapy can be quite helpful. But how do I access hyperbaric therapy? So let me ask you a question. I didn't ask you this question the last time we were on the show. What drug do we use in a hospital for a burn victim? There isn't one. There's no drug. What drug do we use for flesh-eating bacteria wounds? There isn't one. What drug do you use for carbon monoxide poisoning? There Hyperbaric isn't. Hyperbaric oxygen. What, tr what drug do you use that uh, is for... Uh, uh, the bends for scuba divers, there isn't one, okay? So the 13 conditions that we use in the hospital are life-threatening conditions. That should be a clue to us. We can take a burn victim and save his life. We can take a car the carbon mine and save their life. We can take a, a diver and save their life. But we don't have access to other things they call off-label use. So the most valuable supplement or drug or anything on this planet, on the planet Earth, okay, is oxygen. And even more so when it's under pressure. That's why we use it in the hospital for those types of conditions, because they're life-threatening conditions. We don't do something, they die, okay? So why would we not try to use it for other types of conditions and diseases? Make sense? Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, so, so why? Why blood, we're again, not using it for all these other conditions? Oh, yes, it's it's criminal. I mean, really, uh, uh, some of the reasons why we don't know about it, it's not accessible. I mean, even if you go to your doctor that's a neurologist and say, I'm thinking about taking my, my father who had a stroke to a hyperbaric chamber, that doctor is probably going to say, well, that doesn't work. Or, or uh, that's for a hospital because the, the doctor thinks of wound care only. They're mm -hmm. not thinking about other uh, other conditions. So it's kind of important to have that there because that's why right off the bat, it was not accessible financially because it was so expensive. But today through modern medicine and technology, you know, we talk about a telephone that used to be like this big, right? You know, or dial up, right? But look at what we do now. We got a cell phone, you know, you use this every day. Who would have thought you could get all this information in a computer, take pictures, like, right? Take a picture and everything else because of modern science. So modern science has turned around and created a portable hyperbaric chamber. 
So it doesn't cost a half a million to three quarters of a million dollars to build it. And it's portable. So now we can place a chamber into a small clinic or environment from a chiropractor's office to a naturopath's office to an MD's office to a gym with under, you know, to uh, somebody who's got a yoga studio to all kinds of different locations. We can place it there. And then even more so, what happens if I can't get there? What happens if it's too far from me? What happens if this? What happens if that? Well, now we can send it to somebody's home. How wonderful. I can do the treatment in my home. Yeah, but isn't it dangerous? Can I can I blow myself up or kill myself or something? No. In our country, the FDA would have never approved hyperbaric chambers and portable chambers for in-home use with a prescription if they thought there was any safety records or any safety issues whatsoever. Okay. I don't know exactly what happens in your country, but I'm just sharing with you over here. So, but I do have an idea that. If it's safe here, then it's probably safe there and everywhere else in the world, okay? Here so in Europe, are... sorry to interrupt, yeah. just to let listeners know, here in Europe, you don't need a prescription for a home hyperbaric chamber. Although I always recommend consulting with a hyperbaric physician prior to using it because they can Absolutely. put together, like I do it myself, my colleagues on this podcast, we all do it for our patients. So we put together a plan because it's a tool, but you need to know how to use this tool. Hyperbrick medicine, it's very simple to use. It's a tool that's very simple to use. You know, your cell phone, you push a button, it comes on or it goes on, all right? And a hyperbaric chamber, like the ones that you have behind you all right now, there's two zippers and one little valve, and that's it. Grandma Walton and Grandpa can put it together after that, can I tell a story? I always love telling stories. Yes, please. I love your story. Tell great, the story. Okay? Yes. The families the are the ones that have taught me, okay? So I had this couple. Dad was 82 years old, and he had Parkinson's. And mom was 80 years old with uh, Alzheimer's or dementia kind. Of. So we sent them a chamber. They put it together themselves. I'm trying to show you the simplicity of this, okay? They put it together themselves in their home. And then we talked about a protocol and how to use it and all this good stuff and, and you know, just loved on them, okay? You know, and I, you know, I'm always available for our, our families at any given time. So uh, about two weeks later, I, and I explained to him how he can get in and get out, you know, by himself, you know, so if anything happened, he can get out, which is another thing that's awesome about these chambers. They're, you're, you're, claustrophobic has nothing to do with space. It's about control and you can get in and out of the chamber by yourself. You don't need anybody, okay? So two weeks later, he calls me up. Hey, Bill, you know, I just want to talk to you for a few minutes. Okay, what's up? He said, you know, it's pretty interesting. You know, I, I wasn't really going to think that this was going to make that much difference for me. But my tremors on my hand have been reduced. My energy level has increased. I'm sleeping better at night. Can you imagine having Parkinson's and all day long your hands going like this? You do that for like five minutes right now, and you tell me how tired you'd be, okay? And uh, uh, he, he was very happy. He was happy to see there were some results going on. But this is the funny part. I told him, I said, what time do you take a nap? He goes, oh, I usually take a nap about 2 o'clock. Okay, perfect. That's the time we're going to go in the chamber. So about 2 o'clock, he goes in the chamber. His wife zips him in, you know, turns it, turns it on, and then she does whatever she does. And he goes in for like about an hour and a half for a little nap. And he does that. And then when it ends up happening, he wakes up from his little nap and he's like looking around. Where's my wife? She's not there. Well, I'll wait a few more minutes. She doesn't come. So he's banging on the inside of the chamber because he wants out of the hyperbaric chamber. You know, <laughs> he wants out of it. She doesn't come. So then, he, you know, he's kind of panicking a little bit. A little anxiety is happening. And I could, and he's telling me this story, and I can see, you know, the veins out of his neck. And he turns around and he, and he says, "Well, I, I remembered how to get out. You told me I could undo the valve, and I did that. The chamber got, you know, softer. We opened the zipper up, and I got out of the chamber." I said, "Yep, that was it." He said, "I did that, and I started trying to find my wife." <laughs> so he's walking around the house. He hears the TVs on. All right. So he walks in the living room, and there's his wife, very calmly sitting on the sofa. And she's watching I Love Lucy reruns. <laughs> she looks over to her husband 
And he's like angry, right? Like you, she goes, well, where have you been? And he says, I was in that. Oh, she has Alzheimer's. Chamber. Huh? Yeah. And I was in that chamber. You were supposed to come get me out. You didn't come get me out. And she goes, well, when did you get back from the store? <laughs> and he goes, I wasn't at the store. Oh, well, where were you? And that's when he realized that, you know, what happened. Remember, his wife had Alzheimer's dementia, so to speak. So he walks over to his wife, he gave her a big hug, and he told her he loved her. It almost brings a, a tear to my eyes just to think. How awesome. We How need awesome. to get his wife into the yeah. chamber. <laughs> so, it will help you yeah, because it helps yeah. dementia. Yeah, they have so it's to amazing. That's how simple the yeah. chamber it, is it, to it operate. It is. It is. You know, and yeah. it, and it's important because the listeners need to know this is not complicated. It's it's not. We have access to it now. You know, we can put it in a home. We can go to a small clinic. If you don't have any place around that area, then then tell some 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 of the physicians or some of the people around that area. Hey, have you ever thought about using hyperbaric chamber? They're using them here, here, here. You all need to get one in your in your you know facility or so. If you can go get a massage or go get your nails done, you can get a hyperbaric treatment. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Um, it's, we talked about accessibility now. Uh, and you uh, highlighted the fact that the hyperbaric treatments are finally accessible. Absolutely. Uh, yes, maybe uh, treatments that are administered in multiple chambers at the hospital for acute situations, they're still expensive, they're still at the hospital. But we have other options and many different options from clinics to a yoga studio, as you said, to renting a chamber to buying a chamber for home use. So that's accessibility. And we, but I also um, always talk about the fact that hyperbarics is a lot more affordable than people think. Let's just say you went to a typical uh, clinic. The treatments can range anywhere between, I'd say, you know, uh, some places maybe fifty dollars, others seventy-five, others are one hundred fifty, two hundred dollars. They're all using the same chamber, doing the same thing. There's no different. So you know, sometimes it, it depends on the area that you're in. If you're in a in a in an area that the uh, the population of that area is like uh, how you say that not, um, uh, you know workers that you know don't have a lot of funds and stuff, then we all need to make it affordable so that they can also access to it. Okay, so. It is accessible and it is affordable. In my clinic, we treat uh, at $75, okay? And I do actually two-hour treatments. So that comes out to be about $35 an hour. I mean, could we afford that if it was going to help my father walk or my, my family? Absolutely. So sometimes we have this pre-notion that something's way out of our reach or way too uh, expensive or what have you, and that's not true. And I guarantee you, if you really kind of probably talk to somebody that's in your area and say, listen, you know, I'm sure you've heard all these horrors, you know, uh, these stories that are very moving and very touching. But, you know, honesty is the best policy for everybody. All right. Oh, it always is. And, uh, you know, what's really wonderful about, you know, the European culture uh, is they like to really help. In, in England, for example, the number one treatment for MS is hyperbaric medicine. And who treats them? XMS patients. They run the clinic, okay? Like $10 or something for a treatment. God bless those people in, in England, okay? I wish we thought that way here in America, all right? And I'm sure there's places that are where you, you just got to, you know, you put the energy out and you're going to find it. You're going to find people that will help you because, you know, as people that may not have a lot of funds, they can do a go-to fund. They, there's all kinds of ways. We see things... Donut sales, cookie sales, all kinds of stuff, even if it's for treatments. Bill, but you know what concern people usually have? Even though they think, okay, so the treatment is $75. Maybe I can afford this. But I've read that I might need 40 treatments or 50 treatments or even over 100 treatments. Because one treatment is affordable, but then 100 treatments at $75, that's 7500 what options these people have um, other than going to the clinic and getting this um, treatment at the clinic? Great question. I don't think that we need 40 treatments. I don't think we need 80 treatments. I don't think we need a thousand treatments. I think what we need is a few treatments so that we can come to some place and experience it. 
if I tell somebody up front 40 treatments and they can't afford it, they're going to cut, they're going to block me and they're not even going to come and try it. But if I say, listen, you know, it could take, you know, this amount of treatment sometime, but why don't you come down and just have a couple of treatments done? Let's get like four or five treatments. Well, the interesting thing is when they go to a place and they do three or four or five treatments, it is impossible. And I'm going to say a thousand times, it is impossible not to see something happen. You're going to sleep better that night. You're going to have a little bit more energy. Maybe you had some inflammation in the shoulder that you didn't tell me about. And you go, you know, my shoulder, I can move my shoulder. So there's going to be little signs that are going to happen. That's called encouragement. That's called I just, hope. That's I wanna, called faith. I wanted to add something to it because I agree. You, I agree hundred percent. I when you were talking, I remembered one of the patients I had. She had Lyme disease. And she convinced me to give her one treatment. And I was like, no, one treatment doesn't work. If, you, if you're not committing to a series of treatments, don't get that one treatment because you're going to get discouraged. And she was traveling. She could only do one. Anyway, she convinced me. I was like, okay, fine. You want to get the treatment? Get into a chamber. She got into a chamber. And once she got out, you know what she said? She said, can I live in this chamber? For the first time in so many years, she said, she didn't have pain. She didn't have inflammation. She said Absolutely. she felt incredible. And you know, and she changed, she completely changed my outlook on that one treatment because I was always like, no, 10 treatments because we need, based on science, you're only gonna start producing antioxidants after treatment number three, Blah, blah, blah. But then she was the kind of a patient where one treatment made a whole difference. I hear that, you know, 40, 80 and all that. If I did that, I wouldn't have anybody in my clinic because they would say I can't afford it right off the bat. But, you know, sometimes when you're given a sign in a short period of time, that encourages you. Well, now, you'll listen, if it's your kid and you see something positive happen, you'll find a way to go get some help or ask other family members. So wherever, wherever it will come, God will provide. But you have to listen to the whispers. Uh, let's say a person comes in, they try hyperbarics. They see that it works. They see gradual improvement and they understand that it might take longer because with some chronic conditions and not only with hyperbarics, I mean, we tell our patients it took you that many years to develop this condition. If it's a chronic condition, it Absolutely. will take time to reverse it. It's impossible to reverse something overnight if it's a natural therapy, right? So give it some time. Prospect of coming to the clinic every day or every other day for several months for some people is difficult. What other options do they have? And that's the other good thing about this here. You know, what I wanted to make sure was that if, if you couldn't afford to purchase a hyperbaric chamber for your home, then what about if you could rent one for your home? And what about if there was a clinic you could go to? So we have to have options. So the rental is actually a really good thing because what happens on a rental is a family can have the chamber in the comfort of their own home and use it for, let's say, a month. Treat as much as you can, you know? I mean, I've had, I had one family that did 237 hours wow. in one month. So they, they could treat neighbors. In, they had their autistic child in it. They had everybody in the street, down the street in it. I mean, it was it was awesome, okay? And so when you start doing that, you're gonna see you're gonna see things happen. The hyperbaric therapy is a lot more accessible, and you can make it affordable, really, because there are various ways, as you said, of getting your hyperbaric treatments. As I know some people are trying to get it improved through their insurance companies. I mean, when you start. Uh, doing it, uh, you become better and better. But I think key is how you said, come get that first treatment, see what it does for you, see the changes. Absolutely. And then once you see the changes, and these changes are profound. I've just recently had a really bad autoimmune flare. And in three weeks, Bill, three weeks from being crippled, not being able to walk, in pain, brain fog like i couldn't put sentences together it was so bad it took me three weeks to get from that to full range of motion no pain like i'm sharp i you know i can put words into sentences i have clear mind just using hyperbarics 
some supplements in diet, but it was the combination of three. And that's how powerful hyperbaric therapy and other natural therapies, really, because we're talking about integration of different therapies, but to try to experience the benefits and then finding a way of getting that therapy. Think about a couple of things. Is it safe? Yes. Are there side effects? No. And do I have to do any type of a, uh, a manipulation in the body? No. Okay. So that's the natural part of healing. You have the answers to your own health and your own well-being. You've already fought the biggest, the biggest fight of your life just to be born. That's so diseases true. and conditions and stuff there, you can do it. You can. So I'd like to leave your, your, uh, your people with just one little prayer. This is my prayer book that I do every day, you know, and there's one prayer in here <clears throat> that I do all the time. And it's, and I, it, it's, it's for healing. It's just for healing, but I kind of changed the words a little bit because it's supposed to be like, for me, when I, when I read it, you know, it's like, I'm asking for it. I don't ask for it for me. I'm asking it for you today. I'm asking it for your listeners. I'm asking it for you, Dr. Marsha. And it says this, a prayer for healing says, Lord, you invite all who are burdened to come to you. Allow your healing hand to heal them. Touch their soul with your compassion for others. Touch their heart with your courage and infinite love for all. Touch their mind with your wisdom that their mouth may always proclaim your praise. Teach them to reach out to you in their need and help them lead others to you by example. Most loving heart of Jesus, bring them health and body and spirit that they may serve you with all their strength. Touch gently their life, which you have created now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bill. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay, and we're going to end this podcast here because I Thank think you. we can't say in it. I mean, everything that could be said was said. Guys, thank you for listening. If yep. you know someone who can benefit from this information, please send them the link to this episode. I will have all the links with Bell's Clinic, uh, people helping people information and some initiatives that they do in the podcast description. And I'll see you next week.